Hello again. In this module, we're going to cover customizing the project environment by making some modifications to both the Gantt chart and the different Gantt bars. You'll notice I have the module 16 file open. Let's say, for example, we wanted to add some emphasis to a particular task. And you'll notice that I have the task number 8 selected here. And you can see the Gantt bar representation out here in the Gantt chart. So in this case, I want to just add a little bit of emphasis to this particular bar style. Now it's important to note that when you attempt to make a formatting change that you can either change the formatting to the entire Gantt chart or to an individual bar. And so where you're selecting is obviously going to be important here. So a quick easy way of making a modification to just a bar is by going up and right clicking on it. When I right click on the Gantt bar you'll notice that there's a format bar option which is different than if I was to right click out in the timeline area and I was to note the bar styles. So the formatting of a single bar and formatting the bar styles is quite different. And so what we want to do here is we're going to right click on that and we'll choose format bar. And in this case, I'm just going to make a formatting change to this one bar here. I'll click on the color drop down and I'll change it to a, an orange color there and click OK. Now, again, I can also make changes to the entire chart itself. And so from the ribbon, I'm going to click on Format. And from the Format area, you're noticing that there's a Gantt Chart Style area, Gantt Chart Style. I can click on the pop-out here, and it'll expand out the Bar Styles area and I'll hit cancel there, which is different than right above that, you'll notice that there's a more option. And from more, it's basically saying, here are some scheduling styles and here are some presentation styles down below. And you can make those changes there. Coming over to the left-hand side, you notice that there's also a format with a drop down here as well, which gives you the option of either going into the bar or back into the bar styles. So if I have a particular task selected, I can easily get up to the bar area to make a change there. As we did earlier, if I right click to get to the bar styles, which I'll do here, it brings me into a dialog box that shows me a lot of different options regarding the appearance of the different bars within the Gantt chart. And you'll notice it shows the appearance, but it also shows the name right next to it. So if I wanted to make a formatting change, for example, something like the milestone, I can click in the milestone appearance and down in the lower area, it changes right what formatting options I have for that particular selected item. So for milestone, and you'll see this quite often, where the milestone is actually changed to look a little bit different, maybe a star, for example, right? Or something like, right, the circle. Okay, some of you might have seen that before. So I can make these changes throughout my schedule. And if you scroll down, you'll notice that there's quite a few different things that you can modify here in terms of things like summaries and, and milestone information related to the formatting. You can see areas like the ability to change the formatting of the deadline. Okay, and I'll click OK there. And you'll notice the change here to the milestone. Now some other changes that you can make, and you may have noticed that when we were in the bar styles area, is where and how the formatting and the data elements, the, the field information, if you will, is being stored with the Gantt charts and the Gantt bars. If I right click and I go back into that bar styles, you may have noticed that there was a text option. And so again, if I have the task selected and I go into text, I can see that on the right hand side, it is displaying the resource name. 
but I may want to display additional information. Uh, for example, inside of the actual Gantt bar, I may want to pull in something like percent complete, which I can do here. Or maybe I want it on the left-hand side of the bar. And I'll click OK there. And so you can see the percentage is now showing up on right, the individual bar. Often, you'll also want to display information in your timeline area that's outside of your ability to manipulate the Gantt chart and the Gantt bars, for example. So perhaps you wanted to point out something about this conduct needs analysis just from a textual perspective, just a graphical illustration. So from the Format tab, you'll notice on the far right-hand side you have a Drawing drop-down, and you have some different drawing options in there. So I'll click on Drawing. And you'll notice you have things like arrows and arcs and rectangles and lines and even a text box. And so text boxes can be useful because they allow us to just simply place more information out in the Gantt chart. So I'm going to, with the text box selected, I need to click and drag. I'm going to determine the size of the text box. So I'm going to click and drag just a block right there. And you'll notice that there's a cursor now just waiting inside the text box for me to type something out. And I'll type in here, this will need to be addressed by the stakeholders. And I can do a couple different things with this text box if I determine that the sizing is not what I needed it to be. Notice that I'm just waiting for the two arrows, right? So if I click on it here, the expectation is that I'm moving it, right, by grabbing it on the border. But notice the little gray bars that allow me to resize this. And then I can move it over. Now if I click inside of it, it's expecting me to, to edit it again. So I need to get on the border if I want to move it, if I want to move it anywhere. Okay. And I do have some different formatting options with, within this um, to make some subtle changes. Often what you'll do with a text box like this, if we go back into drawing, is I will add something like an arrow. So I'll click on the arrow and then I can just rest it right there on the border and I'm going to just point to that area. Notice that I started on the box and then I pushed it to the um, to the destination area. Now where I'm going to do the formatting around any of these items is going to be back in drawing. So if I go up to the drawing area, you'll notice that there are things like cycle fill color. Also right above that is the properties. And this allows me to then determine exactly what color I want. So if I just don't want to cycle through the coloring, I can come in here and say, well, no, I want it to be a very specific color. And I want the line to maybe be a little bit thicker in this particular case. Let's take a look at the Size and Position tab in the Format Drawing dialog box. You'll notice that you have two options here, Attached to Timescale, which works really well. You basically identify where you want it to be in the timescale, and the text box will just go with it. You also have the option of attaching to a task, and in this case, you do have to identify the task that you want to attach it to. So the, within the format drawing, you're just working with that text box, so just tell it which ID, uh, task ID that you want to associate it to. It is giving you some sizing options here, which you can manipulate, but it is also um, telling you exactly what the vertical and horizontal position of the text box is as it relates to the to the task. So when you set it, that those numbers will come in here. And so you really just have to worry about the ID. But if you want to offset it just a little bit, you can manipulate the horizontal and vertical positioning um, as it relates to the text box. And then the width and the height can be manipulated here or back in the text box itself. And then click OK there. Now you'll notice that when I select an object and I hold down the additional key, many of you will be accustomed to being able to group items together. 
And what you'll notice is that in the case of working with lines and shapes like this within project, that's not an option for us. So you will need to keep track of where you are placing these objects as you as you work through and, and start to start to play with them a little bit.